Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Boyd's Outdoors. And uh, today I'm gonna be talking about my barbecue and watermelon and Millie de Fleur chickens. Uh, giving you guys another in-depth review on my chicken breeds. And uh, so far I've already done the Rhode Island Whites, Chocolates, Chocolate Silver Lace Torpingtons, and now I'm gonna do these guys. Uh, so these are my Bantams. And uh, so yeah, let's get into the review. All right, guys, so uh, here's my Bantams. Uh, so first of all, let me start off uh, why they're called Bantams. The word Bantam means small. So these guys are about a third of the size of a normal chicken. Uh, so these guys are around <coughs> one to two pounds. So they are super small. And uh, these guys, this is a hen. And this is a Millie de Fleur hen, okay? Uh, they have feathered, fle uh, feathered feet and uh, brown, black, and white on them. There's a Millie de Fleur rooster. There's a Millie de Fleur rooster. He's a little bit more brown, and he also has feathered feet. So, as you can tell, these guys are absolutely great for winter. Um, one thing, though, is Millie de Fleur uh, is a heritage breed. So they are, uh, they are pretty special, pretty rare to me. And uh, yeah, so I have four Millie de Fleur hens. One, two, three, and four. And the other breed, and I also have two Millie de Fleur roosters. One, two, that's, that's the dominant rooster of this whole entire flock. Feathered feet, same thing, same as all the others. Nice big comb and waddle. And, uh, yeah, as you hear, their crow is pretty small because uh, they're tiny. Pretty squeaky crow because they're small. And, uh, and so the other breed I have is a Barbie to watermelon. So this is my most expensive chicken breed. And in my opinion, uh, also just straight up facts, uh, these are the most expensive chicken breed in the world. Um, so that guy right there, that rooster will go for a hundred and two hundred fifty dollars. All right. Now he's also a bantam. And as you can see, he has a walnut comb. So it's very spiky on top. And, uh, they're a little bit smaller than the Millie de Fleurs. No feathered feet. Uh, they do a little bit, a little bit less better, uh, than the Millie de Fleurs in the winter. But, uh, so, we hatched all these guys out, and the Barbie the Watermills, we actually had not too good of a hatching rate. So, with the Barbie the Watermills, we had a hatching rate, uh, of, I believe, let's see, four out of 16 eggs, so that's, what, 25%? Yeah, 25%. And, uh, so, I had, we hatched out three roosters. That's a rooster. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And I know you guys might be wondering, where's the chick? Well, here's the chick. She's uh, she's featured in one of my videos called The Smallest Chicken Ever. Uh, I believe she is probably, no joke, the smallest chicken ever. She is about the size of your hand. Uh, she probably weighs less than a pound. Uh, she lays perfectly great eggs. Um, I do have to say... Uh, all the chickens are uh, pretty docile here, pretty friendly. They want to be around you. Um, the Millie de Fleur roosters are a little bit territorial, so, uh, and it is just that one. It's probably just because he's the main rooster. But, uh, yeah, so all friendly, loving. Uh, now let's get into some advantages and disadvantages with these breeds. Um, so first advantage, to having, uh, let's go with the Millie de Fleurs. Uh, first advantage to owning the Millie de Fleurs is their hardiness. Uh, they're extremely hardy. Um, they have uh, a nice, nice coat on them. And as you've seen, feathered feet. So they're fully covered by feathers. Um, they do great in the winter. Um, just, it's overall great uh, in the winter. Uh, with the Barbie to watermills in the winter, um, they are not, they do not do as well, uh, because they don't, first of all, they don't have feathered feet, and I have found that walnut combs are, uh, easily obtainable, uh, to 
boss fight, then the millage flare combs. So, because there are walnut combs, uh, I don't know, just something about them makes them more uh, easy, makes, them, makes it easier to get a frostbite on them. And uh, let's do another advantage for the Millie de Fleur. Um, an advantage for the Millie de Fleur, I'd say, um, I'd say just their pure, uh, pure rarity. Um, like I said, they're like I said, they're a heritage breed. They're uh, they're beautiful. Uh, the colors on these guys are amazing, and the roosters as well are just beautiful. Um, I love these chickens, and uh, actually, that chick is on top of our coop up here, um, and she's actually she's actually featured as my profile picture. So uh, yeah, these guys are great. Um, uh, great, just because of their rarity, and uh, same with the Barbie the watermelons. Another uh, an advantage to the Barbie the watermelons, great uh, in their rarity. Uh, they're very, very rare. I mean, uh, just amazingly awesome. Uh, and if you guys would also, if you guys, there you go. That's the main reason the Bar main Barbie the watermelon is here, but they're having it off there and. Uh, if you guys would like any of these hatching eggs, please do remember, if you want them, I do uh, separate the chickens for a period of time, uh, so you can get the selected breed, uh, breed of the egg you want, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, let's move on with the advantages and disadvantages, um, I would say another advantage to both is their, uh, their egg laying, I would say they are... They're, of course, they're a rare breed, so they're not like, you know, your normal Rhode Island Reds who lay 250 eggs a year, but they, these guys will lay, uh, I'd say probably 200 eggs a year, uh, for both breeds. Uh, I would say the Millie de Fleurs, uh, a little bit more often, uh, of course, they're the exact same size, uh, although Barbie the Watermelon is a little bit smaller, but, uh, yeah. So their egg laying is pretty okay. Uh, I would for sure choose this breed if I had to get uh, one for rarity and uh, egg laying. That's for sure. And uh, I will uh, put a picture at the end of this to show you guys uh, the eggs uh, difference uh, from these guys. Uh, I, I'll actually just put a picture of uh, all my eggs on there and uh, show you... The difference between these guys' eggs, um, my Pita Pinta, Ashiana eggs, uh, my Rhode Island White eggs, Chocolate Silver Lace Torpington eggs, um, Quail eggs, Rose Coming Kana eggs, and, uh, I believe that's it. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, and, um, we also did get one mega egg from the Rhode Island Whites, just a huge, huge 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 egg and uh so uh yeah um let me think of some more advantages and disadvantages uh one disadvantage uh they're both small they're uh so they are uh you know pretty easy for predators to get pretty uh, easy for them to get in the sense that they're uh small um they're not that powerful but but they, uh, both of them are very flighty. They love to fly around. Absolutely love it. So they can protect themselves. If you let them free range, they get attacked. They probably will, probably will just roost in trees. They're, uh, they're pretty flighty. They're, and they're very smart. Um, these Barbie the watermelons are probably the smartest chickens I have. They're very, uh, very social chickens and interactive chickens. Um, but yeah. Uh, so... I think, uh, oh yeah, both of them have very beautiful colors. I mean, you look at the colors on the Barbie the Watermail compared to the colors on the Millie de Fleur Rooster. Um, not sure, you know, which one's better. You guys put in the comments which one you think is better. Um, so I'll put the name of the chickens in the title because it's a little bit hard to spell. But uh, yeah, um, let me keep thinking. So, oh yeah, one, another advantage actually to having these is you don't need that much space. We do have a 144 square foot coop, uh, plenty of, uh, no, not 144, 
144 square foot coop. My bad. Um, let's see. This is a uh, four by eight. So it's a 32 uh, square foot coop and 144 square foot run. So that's actually plenty for these guys. And since they're small, they need half the amount of space as normal chickens. But in this case, I want to give them just enough room as they need and more so I can call them free ranging. And uh, they, they are free ranging in their uh, little coop. I can let them out once in a while. Uh, I probably won't do that anytime soon just because I want to keep them safe because these are my most expensive chickens. And, uh, yeah, so I'll set the camera up, uh, probably feed them a couple things, and, uh, yeah, show you guys that. See you then. <laughs> Alright, guys, so, uh, hopefully you can see me. Uh, so, yeah, here's my hand compared to one of these chickens. Super small. And, uh, yeah, he's gonna get right there in front of the camera for you, just for you guys. And, uh, so, yeah, I, uh, have to kneel down here. And, uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna give them some treats. They absolutely love these. Same things I gave the Rhode Island, uh, Rhode Island Whites. So, uh, here I go. And this has, uh, little pieces of corn, sunflower seeds, and mealworms in it. So, they absolutely go crazy for it. They absolutely love it. Come on. Right. Yeah, they uh, absolutely love it. I normally don't feed them on my hand, but this time I will, just to show you guys. I actually don't know if you can see it, but... Uh, yeah, there you guys go. So they're actually not, they're not that big of a fan uh, for the uh, corn, just because I already give them the corn. But um, yeah, so these guys are uh, super cute chickens. Um, totally recommend if you want to start chicken breeding, totally recommend you guys get them. Uh, maybe not the Barbie the watermelons, but. Uh, for sure, the Millie de Fleurs. They are beautiful and one of a kind. I could not tell you how, how happy I am to have them. And, uh, yeah, do a little bit more feeding here. And then uh, that'll be the end of the video. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, these guys uh, had them for... Uh, <laughs> they think they're trying to eat my finger. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, I've had them for, how long have I had these guys for? Had them for, sorry guys. Uh, I think I've had them for about eight months, nine months. Uh, Hatched these guys out in February, so you guys can do the math, but um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so these guys uh, just started laying about, um, let me put some more treats in my hand. Just started laying about uh, two or three months ago. And the uh, first egg I got, man, first egg I got was the size. You guys will actually see it in the picture, but first egg I got, uh, they're like, what's his hand? But first first egg I got was super small, size of a dime. Actually, probably smaller than a dime, but super cute egg um, from just super cute chickens. I absolutely love them. And, uh, yeah, um, they are very territorial, um, both of the breeds, mainly, uh, Millie de Fleur, like I said, and, uh, yeah, I, I totally suggest you guys get into chicken breeding, uh, it can be a very, uh, successful business, um, I love, uh, selling the eggs, hatching them out, uh, getting these chickens, and, uh, I have 28 chickens in total, Right here, I believe I have 10 or 9. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I have a uh, baby chick in the house, three Rhode Island Whites, four Pita Pintas, five Rose Coleman Connors, uh, four Chocolate Sunway Soap and Things. I believe that's it. 
Maybe I don't have 28. I'm not sure. But, uh, and uh, six quail. I know you guys, uh, I, I started off in the beginning to tell you guys about my quail and stuff, but I haven't done too many videos about the quail. Uh, probably should do that soon. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my videos. And uh, that'll be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, see you guys in the next one.